Welcome to Truth Africa series, Unapologetic and Truthful. I am your host, Yemi Melikaya. Watch this video of human rights activist Jane Elliott on racism in America. Here's what she has to say. Pay attention. And right now, white people are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, you haven't read the book The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg. Ben Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, The main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, white people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, not mine, unfortunately we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies so we don't want to do that. He says the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again he says, unfortunately the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do that. The third thing he says, and white men, women had better pay attention to this, 60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? Can you talk a little bit about the trauma associated with The trauma associated with it? Yeah. One of the main traumas is it tells white people that they are superior because of the lack of melanin in their skin. And then they find out suddenly that we've got a black president. That's traumatic. That's where the trauma is. Living a lie, finding out the truth, is traumatic. Finding out now, recently, that within 30 years, white people will be in the numerical minority in this country is going to be traumatic. White people are scared to death right now, particularly white males. They're scared to death that they are going to lose their power in the future. And they are. But if you want to get ready for the future, if you want to be treated well in the future, treat others well in the present. What we do in the present constructs the future. We called the Japanese, and you'll pardon me, but this is what we call them, slant-eyed little yellow mm -hmm. We didn't say that about the Germans. After the war, we rebuilt Germany and Japan, and we get along beautifully with the Japanese. That was in 1945 that we finally won that war. How, ma how many years ago was that? Figure that out quickly. I'm not a math person, but... You're not a math time. person, but you know it wasn't that far. Right. And it didn't take 50 years for us to, to have peace with the Japanese and the Germans, even though, even though we dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. The Japanese hadn't killed 10 million people. Nowhere near that. We didn't drop any bombs on Germany, any, any atomic bombs on Germany. They were a different kind of people. We couldn't afford to do that. We killed how many... Japanese people with two atomic bombs and they forgave us. You want to talk about forgiveness? You want to talk about changing this thing? I cannot understand how Japanese people can stand the sight of any of us and yet they do. I cannot understand why black people who have been subjected to the ugliness that they've been subjected to in this country can get up every morning and go to work among us and not be absolutely furious. And I don't understand why we allow white people to behave the way they do. I don't understand that. And my third graders, after they'd gone through the exercise, couldn't understand it and wouldn't tolerate it. And when they went up to junior high and a junior high teacher used the N-word, one of my, my former students said, if you're going to use that word, I'm going to go out in the hall until you stop using it because we don't use that word in this school. That was a, sixth, a seventh grader who told his teacher off. When we have enough students who are willing to confront people who are making racist, sexist, ageist, homophobic statements, we're going to be better off. We have got to stop tolerating the intolerable. If it's intolerable for my black cousins, and every black person on this earth is one of my cousins, if it's intolerable for them, it's intolerable for me. I will not tolerate it. I will not tolerate it. That is not that. I am required not to tolerate that kind of treatment for the people who are related to me. And that's every person on the face of the earth. 
If your ignorance is such that you will mistreat somebody because of your ignorance about the color of their skin, don't do it around me. Number one, I've been threatened with death lots of times. Now I say, go for it, fool. My husband died four years ago. Being with him would not be a bad thing for me. Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. Living a worthless, useless life is much worse than dying. Before we go any further, let's establish a clear understanding of what racism is. Racism is a deeply ingrained system of discrimination and prejudice that is based on someone's race or ethnicity. It often leads to unequal treatment, unequal opportunities, and sometimes even violence. To truly comprehend the present, we must acknowledge the past. Racism has deep historical roots, with instances like slavery, colonialism, and segregation having left a lasting impact on societies and their structures. This historical injustice continues to reverberate in various forms today. Racism is not just about blatant art of hatred or discrimination. It can be subtle, often manifesting as unconscious bias or microaggressions. Systemic racism, on the other hand, is deeply ingrained in institutions and policies that perpetuate inequality, making it a challenge to dismantle. Racism has devastating consequences, not only on individuals, but entire communities. It can lead to lower educational attainment, reduce access to quality healthcare, economic disparities, and a range of social injustice. Additionally, it takes a toll on mental and emotional well-being, causing stress, anxiety, and trauma. Racism is a deeply rooted problem, but it is not insurmountable. By understanding its history and actively working towards a more inclusive society, we can make progress. It is a journey that requires commitment, empathy, and constant self-improvement. Together we can confront racism and create a more equitable future for all. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video informative, please like, share, and subscribe. And do not forget to leave your thoughts and comment below. Let's keep the conversation going. We will see you in the next video.